From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. I love you. Uh, hello? I said, I love you. Uh, yeah. That does not please you. Oh, uh, pleases me fine. Uh, now, why don't you and I get together oh, and we'll be able... would be nice. Well, I'll just name the time and the place and, uh... Hey, wait a minute. Who are you? Carmelo Hocaris, Johnny. Oh, well, uh, let's get down to Earth. Carmela? Yes, Johnny. Well, I, uh, well, usually when my phone rings this way on a Sunday night, well, Oh, it... I know. You expect some dull insurance agent to be calling you. Yeah. With a dull insurance matter for you to worry about, no? Yeah, that's usually the case. <laughs> but this one does not need to be dull. You mean you have an insurance problem on your mind? Of course. So maybe you will help me? Well, just name the company, any company, and I'm on my way. The Universal Adjustment Bureau would be interesting. So who cares if they're interested? Come on, Carmela, get to the point, huh? Come see me, Johnny. Tell your friend Pat McCracken at the Universal. Yeah, sure. Tell him what? That I called you. Will you, Johnny? Are you kidding? Goodbye. Yeah, well, where can I... Hello? Hello? Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now that the holiday season is with us, there are three different reasons why you should have several packages of Chef Boyardee pizza pie mix handy in the house. The reasons are friends who drop in for lunch, friends who drop in for supper, and friends who come over just to say hello. Because pizza is perfect to serve friends and family any time of the day. And when you use Chef Boyardee pizza pie mix, it's so easy. You see, everything you need is right there in the one Chef Boyardee pizza package that you keep on your cupboard shelf. Needs no refrigeration. You get the flour that turns into crispy golden crust. Chef's own pizza sauce, made according to the very same recipe Chef Boyardee brought with him from Italy and even mellow Italian-style cheese, already grated to become a delicious, bubbling topping. Serve everybody pizza this holiday season. They'll love it. And you'll find pizza is so easy to make when you use Chef Boyardee Pizza Pie Mix. Get several packages. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Latin Lovely matter. Expense account items 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 50 cents for phone calls early Monday morning trying to reach Pat McCracken. Item 6, a dollar taxi fare to the offices of Universal Adjustment. Top of the morning to you. Yeah, where the Sam Hill have you been all morning, Pat? All morning? Are you kidding? Look, the clock on this desk says exactly 9.02. For me, that's the crack of dawn. Now, what's bothering you? Carmela. Oh, Carmela Jocares. Yeah, only it's Jocares. Oh, well. Might have known she'd call you direct. I should have warned you, Johnny. You know her, Pat? She's threatened to come down here and camp on my doorstep any minute. <laughs> well, can you think of a nicer ornament to have around? If she's anything like she sounds on oh, the phone. Oh, she is. She is, Johnny, yeah. That's why I should have suggested that special investigator Martha Maybury Balderdale help her. Balderdale? Uh -huh. now, how could an old battle axe like her know how to deal with a young, charming, beautiful... Uh, 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 dancer like Carmela? Dancer? Is that what she is? Yes, yes. Not very good, oh. but she's just as beautiful and seductive. And, uh, no. No, no, maybe I, b I better stick old Lady Baldale on. All right, Pat, quit the kidding and tell you me tell. what it's all about. Who's kidding? Well, where do I find Carmela, her address? Now, you see, you're already emotionally involved with her. You haven't even met her. Emotionally, Client Pat? relationship in our business should be entirely objective, Johnny. How can I possibly expect you to look at Carmela's insurance problem with an unbiased eye? Oh, mind? Pat, and All what's... she'd have to do is bat those lovely big brown eyes at you a couple of look, times. Look, look, and... will you stop baiting me and tell me what this is all about? <laughs> emotion. All right. I got involved with this little Latin lovely as a favor to the company that issued her the policy, Surety Mutual and Trust. What kind of a policy? Retirement. 
pays her 50000 when she's 45. Meantime, if she dies, her beneficiary gets the fifty grand. So what's the matter with it? Ah. Well, like I told you, Johnny, she's a dancer. Nightclubs always has a partner. Some good young kid who can make up for her shortcomings. Only a different partner every month or so. Well, what's that have to do with her insurance? Well, she has the company name her partner as beneficiary. Oh, I see. And if she keeps changing her policy... Right. And by now it has so many riders attached to it, the company's running out of filing space. And what's more important, the cost of servicing this one lousy policy and the time that's been wasted on it. And the last time... Well, she's been so insistent, you'd think she was planning to die tomorrow. Well, maybe she is. Why doesn't the company just stall on making some of these changes? Well, they've tried that. So what happened? She's on the phone every day, two or three times a day. Nobody has any peace. That's why they finally turned to me in desperation. And you said you'd have me talk to her. I did not. She asked for you. Why? How'd she even know about me? Oh, newspapers, some of the radio programs about the cases you've handled. Johnny, you're her idol. You're her dream boy. Oh, yeah, sure. But what to do about this? Well, you get her to settle with one beneficiary. Get her married, something like that, so her policy will stay set for a while. Yeah, married, even if you have to... Yeah... You? Huh? Yeah. Oh, no, you don't. Not me. Oh, no, no, no. It's a great idea. Johnny, her address is 624 East 47th Street, New York. Now, you look but just at... remember one thing. Universal Adjustment Bureau will not pay for your defense in a breach of promise suit, John. It's all the way or nothing. Oh, yeah, sure. Call me up sometime when you have a case for me. Sucker. Me, that is. Because of item 7, 1940, plane fare and incidentals to New York City, taxi from the airport to 624 East 47th Street, a nice modern apartment building complete with a uniform doorman. Miss Hokaris? That's right. Can I have your name, sir? Johnny Dollar. Oh, yes, of course. So, if you'll just give me her apartment number... And may I see your credentials, please? My credentials? Well, sure, why not? Here, take a good look. Uh, that seems all right. Thank you, sir. Now, look, she's expecting me. I know, sir. Then what's all this fuss about? Hey, will you step in the lobby, please? Oh, sure. Now, what's the number of her apartment? Uh, one moment, please. She is in, isn't she? Yes, she is. I don't understand about answering the house phone, though. You're certain that she's in? Absolutely, sir. But why she doesn't answer... Where's her I... apartment? It's number seven up the stairs. Come on, show me the way. Yes, sir. She only came in a few minutes ago. And nobody else has called on her? No, sir. Were all those precautions of yours on her orders? Yes, sir. She seemed to be fearful of something lately. Fearful? Right, right here, sir, number seven. That's funny. Miss Ocades! Miss Ocades! Carmela! Listen. Now what? That sound inside. Well, there must be somebody you in. You got a pass key? Well, yes, sir. Only... Come on, give it to me quick. But unless you have some authority, Mr. Dunn. I have all I need. Carmela. Mr. Dollar. She's been killed. No, no. No. No, she's alive, all right. But that's about all. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. There is a difference, a great big difference in fix medicated cough drops. There is a difference, a great big difference. Get relief with every single drop. Yes, there is a big difference in Vicks medicated cough drops. The medication makes the difference. Only Vicks cough drops are medicated with the exclusive throat-soothing ingredients of Vicks Vapor Rub. Two delicious flavors, Vicks Regular and New Wild Cherry. Next time your throat feels raw and irritated from coughs due to colds, remember... There is a difference, a great big difference in Vicks medicated cough drops. The medication makes the difference. Yes, the medication makes the difference. And for a stuffy nose, just one whiff. With a Vicks inhaler and that miserable feeling of a stuffy nose goes in seconds. Use it anywhere, anytime. Vicks inhaler. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Latin Lovely Matter. 
Carmela Hocares, beautiful Latin American dancer who kept changing the beneficiary of her insurance policy to the point where the company was going crazy, who demanded another change, this time almost desperately. We'd found her unconscious on the floor of her apartment. Bill, the doorman, discovered how her assailant had got in. Through the service entrance into the kitchen, Mr. Dollar. He must have run away when he heard us at the door. Any brandy, anything like that around here, Bill? Yes, a little bar there in the corner. Okay, I see it. Do you know a doctor you can call? I have a list on my desk in the lobby. Well, then go on down and call him. Uh, isn't this a matter for the police? Sir? I'll worry about that. You get a doctor up here. Yes, sir. Camila. Camila. Camila, here. See if you can drink this. Oh, Johnny. That's right. Come on now, drink this. That's good. A little more now. Come on. Oh, no. No, I'm all right now. Help me to the sofa. Yeah, sure. Here now. Hey, uh, how's that? Oh, thank you, Johnny, darling. Are you badly hurt? What happened? He struck me. Who? Oh. He knocked on the back door. I thought it was Billy to deliver something. So I opened the door, and he struck me before I could... Oh, Johnny... It was terrible. Well, who was he? Do you know? No, darling. I'm still so afraid. Hold me, please, in your arms. Carmela, do you know who it was? No. It was then he heard you and Billy at the front door. And you have no idea who it could have been? Well, he was short and dark and... Johnny. Yeah? The man who has been calling me, first from Mexico and then from here in New York, threatening me. Well, who? I do not know, darling. Threatening about what? You have done it once too many, he would say. Now you will be sorry. And he would hang up. Done what once too many or too often or whatever he meant? I do not know, Johnny. Well, I know darn well the insurance company would never carry things this far. The insurance? Oh, Johnny, Johnny, you can't do it for me, can't you, darling? Do what? I only ask them to make a little change. But all they do is delay, delay. Oh, now, look, we have more important things to think about now. More important than the insurance? Oh, you do not understand. Please, my sweetheart. How can I work unless Armando is... First, we find out who attacked you and why. <gasps> oh. oh, Billy, darling. The doctor says we'll be here in 15 or 20 minutes. No, Mr. not the doctor. Uh, I love you, Billy, but you are a nice boy, but, but not the doctor. Why not? Because... Because I am all right now. You're sure about that? Carmela? Oh, yes. Yes, I am all right. You know, you recovered pretty fast. No marks on you. What do you mean? I wonder just how much of a beating you really took. Johnny, my darling, my love. Surely you do not think Oh, that... I'm not sure what I think. Okay, Billy. Call off the doctor until I can find out what's what. Oh, thank you, my sweet. You do care about me. I love you. Oh, yeah, sure. And, Billy Boy, you stay here until I get back. Yes, sir. My Juanito, where are you going? You know something, Carmela? I wish I knew. I know where I was going, all right, to 18th Precinct Police Headquarters and my old friend Randy Singer. If anybody could get me a rundown on Carmela and any of her contacts, he could. If Carmela's attacker left any fingerprints, his boys would find them. Cutting through the alley beside the apartment building, headquarters would only be a couple of blocks away. But all oh, that alley was a mistake. I didn't see the man step out of the doorway behind me. But I did feel that old familiar poke in the small of my back. No. Keep walking, senor. To the next doorway. All right, now look. If you'll take that gun out of my back. Walk. What is this, a holdup? No. In here. Well? I am Federico. Senor Dollar. Bully for you. So what? I could hear you from the back stairway of her apartment. So you would help her, eh? Carmela? Maybe? No. You will not, because I will kill you first. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Smoke Kent. Smoke Kent, smoke Kent with the micronite filter. Remember this, Kent, 
filters best of all the leading filter cigarettes. So get the mild Kent cigarette, smoke Kent with the Micronite filter. Remember this, Kent filters best of all the leading filter cigarettes. So get the mild Kent cigarette, smoke Kent, smoke Kent, smoke Kent. What a wonderful feeling, smoke Kent. And now, Act Three of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar and the Latin Lovely Matter. <laughs> Kill you. Do you mind telling me why? I will kill you before I let you help that woman ruin my son. Your son? You are from the company for the insurance, are you not? Yeah, that's right. To make her the change in the policy, to change what you call the, the, the benefit, the, uh... the... Beneficiary, yes. That's what she's asked for. But I will not let you. Well, I haven't said I... Oh, look, put away that gun, will you? No. Okay, Chief. What? But well, be careful, this man is armed. What do you call it? The policy? Just a burning your attention. No! Give me that gun. No, no, I... All right, now we're on even terms. Just who are you and what's this all about? I'm, I'm Federico Gomez, the father of Armando. And who's Armando? Armando, my son. He would be the next fly in the web of the spider. The what? That woman, Carmela Hocaris. It is my boy, my fine son, that she would make her victim like all the others. Like all what others? Look, Mr. Gomez. He is a dancer, my son. A fine dancer, the toast of all Mexico. And she would do with him what she did with the rest. Charm them, make love to them, bring them here to this city to dance with her. Unless I stop her. Well, I fail to see anything particularly... And like the others, my son would fall in love with her with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his mind. Yeah, I'm sure, and but... And she... Oh, of course, she would prove her love for him with all the big insurance benefit. You mean that naming those lads in her insurance policy... Oh, now wait a minute. You do not know what 50,000 of your American dollars can mean to a young man fresh in his, uh, what you call, career. Mr. Gomez. Is it not true? Well, yeah, it's a lot of dough to hold up in front of a young fellow, but there's a big difference between that much cash and just a promise of insurance money. The eyes of a young man are easily blinded by this beautiful woman, amigo. She has blinded so many. They have danced with her and given her their money because they loved her. All right. But when she got their money, she was through with it. When they begged her to marry them, she spit on them. She turned them out. Pedro Fernandez, you know of him? No, I'm afraid I don't. Because of this woman, he killed himself. So it was with him and as the son of my friend. But she will not do this to my son. And you honestly think the mere fact of a big insurance policy? Was it not true with him and as with Pedro, with Angel, with, with all the rest? These were young men, amigo, like my son. Unwise to the world, unwise to a woman like this. Suicide. I will do anything to keep her from using that insurance to ruin my son. Senor. Uh, the more I live in this world, the more amazed I am at some of the things that happen in it. Things that are implausible, impossible, but that sometimes do happen. I can only beg of you. Humbly. All right, look, Mr. Gomez, I'm keeping this gun. By right, sir, I ought to have you locked up for poking it in my back for your attack on Carmela. But I... Where are you staying? At the Hotel de Glen Arms. I want you to go back there. Stay there until you hear from me. You will help me, senor. If you do as I say. Gracias, senor. Gracias. The scene with Carmela back in her apartment was not a pretty one. She not only admitted to having used the insurance, among other things, to further her shaky career at the expense of those young and better dancers, but was quite proud of the broken hearts and broken minds she may have left behind. Until I tore into her, and believe me, I did. Murder? Oh, no, Juanito. Now, you look. No. If you didn't murder those two young kids, well, you might as well have plunged in the knife yourself. Oh. I don't know I don't know what laws, what legal action may be dragged in to make you pay for what you've done, but there are moral laws, too, laws of decency. But I did I'll tell you this, know. Carmela, that from now on, the police of this town and of anywhere else you may go, believe me, they'll be gunning for you. And if anything like this ever happens again... No, Johnny. Johnny, please. You must believe me. I did not think. I was thinking only about myself. I did not realize... Well, it's that... high time you did. Your insurance? Oh, baby, that's going to be canceled. 
Unless you can think of someone far away from your career to leave your money to, someone you can't hurt. Oh, Johnny, I promise. Don't you see? Never before has anyone made me realize what I was doing. I have only had to think of myself. By the time I left her, she was sobbing her heart out, promising that she'd spend the rest of her life making up for the things she'd done. And who knows, maybe, well, who knows? Expense account total, including incidentals and transportation back to Hartford. Uh, Johnny Dollar. Pat McCracken, Johnny. Oh, hi, Pat. Well, I just got around to finishing up my report and expense account on that Carmelo Hocates thing you last week. You can just forget the expense account part of it. I got what? Well, for the life of me, I don't know how you did it. What are you talking about? The company just sent me a copy of the rider, Johnny, the last and final rider on her policy. Oh. Naming the new beneficiary and absolutely, irrevocably, can never be changed again. Whom did she name, Pat? Some old childhood... Are you kidding? You! What? <laughs> You sly dog. Hello. Hello. Well, I'll be... Yours truly, Juanito Peso. Our star will return in just a moment. Meet movie star Dorothy Lamour. Actresses can't perform with a rotten cold, so I take four-way, the fastest way to stop terrible cold distress and feel better quick. Right. Of all leading cold tablets tested, four-way's the fastest acting brand. In minutes, amazing four-way starts to relieve aches, pains, headache, reduce fever, calm, upset stomach, overcome irregularity. When you catch cold, remember my advice. Take four-way, fastest way to stop these awful cold miseries. Four-way, 29 cents. Now let me tell you about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Imagine a shampoo so effective it gets rid of embarrassing dandruff with one lathering, but won't dry hair, won't split ends, won't leave a medicinal odor. It's wonderful new Fitch dandruff remover shampoo. One lathering with Fitch removes dandruff, can brighten hair up to 35% too, without harsh medication. Only Fitch guarantees to do all this with one safe, easy lathering or money back. Contains no strong medication, so it's gentle enough for every shampoo. And then dandruff need never be a problem again. Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo, only 59 cents. Now here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, some priceless jewelry, a beautiful girl, and believe me, they add up to trouble. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote today's story. Heard in our cast were Lucille Meredith, Larry Dobkin, Jimmy McCallion, and Harry Bartell. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverley speaking. <laughs>